squid. If everyone has time, maybe we could all get together and go fly a kite. Traveler. Being in the city isn't the only way for me to appreciate the lights and beauty of Lantern Rite. Look, Liyue Harbor lies just beyond this mountain. As long as I stand at this vantage point, I may freely behold the sights of all the kites slowly ascending into the sky. For me, that is enough. I invited you here because there is something I would like to do. I want to release a shell lantern, and I'd like you to be there for it. Yes, I apologize for its crude appearance. I have little skill in that regard. You are very kind, as usual. All right. It's time. Traveler, thank you. I don't get it. Is something wrong, Shanha? Tell me, perhaps I can help. The color black doesn't get dirty easily, so I thought this outfit would be acceptable to wear to work. But Xiangling told me it was inappropriate. But inappropriate? How? She probably just meant the outfit isn't suitable for that particular environment and occasion. But for a festival gathering with friends, a nighttime stroll, or an important banquet, your outfit is more than appropriate, Shenha. So you're saying it's only something I should wear in front of important people? <sighs> I suppose that's another way to think of it. One may have won the kite flying competition, Yu Hung, but this prize should truly be reserved for another. You need not be so humble, honored Adeptus. Among all the kites, yours was quite literally a cut above the rest. Please accept this prize. You deserve it. Besides, I'm quite certain we owe a fair share of the success of this year's lantern rite to you. <laughs> If you insist, then one can hardly continue to refuse. However, there is another matter with which one would ask your assistance. Of course. Hmm. One would be much obliged if you could distribute this case of Sunglo tea among the Millilith on duty. The security of the festivities rests entirely on their shoulders, after all. One presumes they could always benefit from something to invigorate their spirits. Cloud Retainer is so thoughtful and attentive to others' needs. I would expect nothing less of an esteemed adeptus such as herself. Understood. I'll get on that right away. <sighs> A fortuitous result indeed. One's tea surplus has hitherto resolved itself. So, you're still a big fan of Winter Melon Cake, then? Huh? Oh, <laughs> I guess you heard everything Paimon was saying, huh? <laughs> of course. She was talking about you. As your father, how could I not listen? Remember back when you were a kid, and you would sit on my shoulders to watch the Wusho dance? Oh. On our way back home, you would beg me to buy you some Winter Melon Cake. 
We would only buy two at a time. But before long, we tried the winter melon cake from every vendor that street had to offer. There was also that one time you used your pocket money to treat me. Do you still remember? Yeah, I remember. That was the best winter melon cake I ever had. Let's go back sometime. The shop's still there, and I remember the way. My treat, just like before. Are you sure? Absolutely. Our kite is so high up. Thank you for inviting me, Yao Yao. I am having a lot of fun. I'm glad. If you want, we can go fly kites some other time, too. The fun doesn't have to end today. Really? How about we do it during the day next time? That way, we can see the design better. When it flies super high up, it will look exactly like a real finch. Okay. Uh, can I take this kite to bed with me? <laughs> but of course! Given your present countenance, one presumes you are missing some old friends again. One cannot help but be reminded of them. Pray speak. Unburden yourself of these sentiments. One simply wishes Monogius were alive to witness such peace alongside us. He was so skilled in matters of craftsmanship. Kite-making would scarcely prove to be a test of his capabilities. Were he yet amongst the living, he could have opened a kite stall. One is certain it would have been an establishment rich not only in profit, but also esteem. And if, as in the past, he were unable to involve himself in matters of the mortal realm, we could sell the kites in his stead. When we finished, we could bring him back wine and partake in drink and good company. Mooncarver. Those are now but fond moments in our memories. Indeed. The dead are gone, so as the representatives of the living. Let us take in the sights for a bit longer, if just for his sake. Oh, Lantern Rite was simply amazing! I'm not sure I'll be able to sleep tonight. Oh, that? Yeah. Interesting story. It was invented by a guy from Fontaine. His name is Eildison. He's always tinkering away at some mechanism or another. He's even asked the Steambird to write about his inventions on more than one occasion. I believe I have a direct quote from him about this particular one. It, ah, yes, here it is. The device is powered entirely by mechanical components without the need for any additional energy source. Basically, it's a manually operated cranking device. How high it can fly entirely depends on how much force you can exert. Combining this invention with a kite. What a great idea, right? Oh, my conversation with Mr. Ip went really well. I've already sent the first draft of my article back to the Steambird. It's a piece that contains all the pertinent information while also telling a story. I'm quite proud of it. Oh, that reminds me. I should thank everyone who made this possible for me. Especially that spirited lady with those peculiar turns of phrase. Miss Shenyun was her name, right? It was all thanks to your connections and creativity. I would have never thought I'd be able to bring such a special gift back to Fontaine with me. This was my first time experiencing a foreign holiday in person. It was... so exciting! The festive atmosphere, the contagious holiday spirit, the profound, storied cultural traditions steeped in symbolism. Oh, I almost forgot. Kuching even gave me a kite with a poem on it that she wrote herself. 
It goes, dreams are like paper kites. With them do our hopes take flight. Sailing high above the clouds, they yearn for something more profound. Yet try we may and try we might, a deeper truth waits in plain sight. Though we hang our hopes and skies abound, many joys lie on the ground. I want to include this poem in my special feature on Lantern Rite. I'm sure a lot of people will love it. Yep, and happy Lantern Rite to you. Pot of tea with a couple of nibbles, some seasonal greens. Oh, Kaiman almost forgot! Didn't Zhang Li say Hu Tao was also planning on spending some time in Chaoying Village? We didn't have anything else to do today, right? Why don't we go have a look around? Maybe we'll run into her. Mountain air is so refreshing! It makes Paimon feel like she can float around all day and never get tired! Cream! Gummies! Fuel fruit! Huh? Did you hear that? Sunshine! Blue skies! Good vibes! Right? So Paimon just hearing things. Hmm, that voice sounds really familiar. Well, we've got the time. Why don't we go check it out? <gasps> what are they doing here? Nabia, come on! Ah, well, if it isn't my dear partners. See, I told you that something good was going to happen during our travels today. I have to say, sometimes the Steambird's astrology column is spot on. It's just your lucky day. Are you guys also here to catch the festivities? Oh, and that reminds me! Happy Lantern Rite! Happy Lantern Rite. Happy Lantern Rite to you too! Uh, wait, if you're here for Lantern Rite... Then what are you doing on top of this deserted mountain? And that voice we heard, that was you, right, Navia? <laughs> oh, impressive. You could tell it was me from that far away. You've got good ears. That or your voice is just really loud. Well, of course it is. After all, I'm a boss. Indeed. I suppose it's an asset. Sure is! Having a loud voice is a handy tool when it comes to communication. Wait, wait, wait. That wasn't even Paimon's point. Paimon just wants to know why you two were shouting from the top of this deserted mountain. There was something about almonds, maybe? And buell fruit? Ooh, is it some sort of secret code? No, it's not a code. The words are meaningless. Perhaps. But the act of shouting was very meaningful indeed. That's just what mountain climbers do, right? After all the hard work it takes to make it to the top, as you stand on the summit looking out at the vast scenery, it's not easy to resist the urge to release those emotions. <laughs> exactly. You get me, partner. I was afraid that it would cause a disturbance, so I asked the locals around here and they said it was fine. Apparently most hikers like to shout when they get to the top. So the locals are used to it by now. So, you see, it's not just me. I guess everyone shouts from the top of a mountain at some point in their life. Uh, speak for yourself. When you're stressed, don't you ever just get the urge to do something for no reason? Mm, not really. If I ever get stressed, I just go hunting. 
Oh, that's a pretty good way to relieve stress. Hmm. What I choose to hunt depends on my mood. Huh? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> anyway, why don't you two give it a try? Shout anything you want. It's a real stress reliever. Hmm. As long as Paimon has clothes on her back and food in her belly, Paimon doesn't think there's any stress that needs relieving. Oh, I bet you guys are just too embarrassed to let loose. No need to be shy. Even Farina was shouting from the top of this mountain earlier. Huh? Did Paimon hear that right? Farina's also here? In Chaoying Village? Believe in your ears. It is indeed as you heard. Actually, the reason we climbed this mountain in the first place was also because we heard the sound of shouting. Yes, we could just about make out someone yelling things like, Help me! And what should I do? So we hurried up here to check it out. And what do you know? Miss Farina was standing right there, all red in the face. She practically sprinted back down the mountain the minute she saw us. Ah, that reminds me. I believe what she actually said was, So help me, I will figure out what I should do about this script. Uh, so... You could actually hear what she was saying? Why didn't you say so earlier? I thought someone was really in trouble. I figured we would come check out the situation either way. Why not let her keep some privacy? Oh, seems like you caught Farina in the middle of some stress relief as well. She probably would have never thought... No, she definitely would have never thought she would run into anyone she knew all the way out here. I think so. Uh, we ran into Nervalette on the way here as well, but he was already on his way back, so they probably weren't together. What? Nervalette was here too? What was he doing here? It couldn't have been for vacation. I think it just might have been, actually. But apparently he only stayed for half a day before heading back. He's a very busy man. Hmm. Nevillette is not the type to take much time off. Taking even a half day for himself is already a huge step in the right direction. Didn't Charlotte publish an article on the Liyue tea industry recently? Maybe he was inspired to come buy some tea after reading that article. You know, just like you were. My situation is completely different. I'm here because I was asked to accompany you. The tea purchase is simply an added bonus of this location. You Fontanians in your tea drinking. Oh, it's not for me. I lost a bet with Ridesley, and now I have to buy him something. It was just a spur-of-the-moment sort of bet. Ridesley gets really invested in that sort of thing, but he couldn't care less about what he wins in the end. You could give him mint plants that you plucked from the side of the road, and he wouldn't even mind. Uh, if only he was that easygoing when it came to talking business. <laughs> In any case, I'm pretty sure the tea you bought is this region's specialty. What is it called again? Uh, Nervalette even mentioned it earlier. Yes, yes, that's the one. You didn't really buy ten boxes, did you? <laughs> Please, do I look like someone who would fall for that sort of marketing trap? Uh, that reminds me. You guys said you only came up here because you heard my voice, right? I hope it didn't put you out. You must have had other plans for the day. Oh, that's right. Who tell? A few days ago, we heard that a friend was going to be in Chaoying Village. So we decided to come and see if we could run into her. Oh dear. We've been chatting for quite some time. I'm sorry for keeping you. <laughs> that's good. We should probably head out and look for Hu Tao. No need to stay on our account. We just got up here, so we're gonna stay around for a little longer. Hmm. Go and meet your friend. We can meet up in Chaoying Village later. Sounds good. We're gonna head down the mountain then. See you later! What do I have to do to get you to yell from the top of this mountain? Name your price. You really want to hear it that bad, huh? I'm just curious is all. I have a feeling you'll say something amazing. <sighs> I will pass. 
I prefer to let actions speak louder than words. Here we go! Chang Village is known for its tea, but you know what else they have with tea? That's right! Dim Sum! Didn't Gumming say something about Dim Sum being eaten in the morning? Oh, Paimon wonders if we can still get some at this time of day. Oh, well that's fine too. Paimon doesn't care what kind of tea it is as long as it comes with some tasty snacks. Now, let's see what kind of yummy things we can find around here. Uh... Paimon's not seeing things, is she? Is that Farino standing between Zhongli and Hu Tao? Wonder what they're talking about. Hmm, Zhongli knows a lot of stuff. Maybe he's telling Farina about Chao Ying Village. Oh, or maybe Hu Tao is trying to rope Farina into being one of her clients. Hey, this isn't the Fortress of Meropede. But Paimon could be convinced for the right price. Let's say, loser buys the winner three huge bowls of seafood kanji. Since Zhang Li is there, Paimon bets things are pretty tame. It's decided then, Paimon votes for tour guide Zhang Li. Alright, no time to waste! Let's go see who's right! Great, now Paimon shouting too. Oh, well, aren't you a sight for sore eyes? Seems like our luck just keeps on growing. <laughs> that we were able to meet you both without prior arrangement must mean that this is quite the serendipitous meeting indeed. Uh huh? Oh, so both of you are acquainted with the Traveler and Paimon then? Um, looks like someone's learned a thing or two from Zhang Li. Ahem, I must admit, I am a bit surprised to see you here, Traveler. But seeing as you're a hero who's been all over to that, it makes sense that you would be well-traveled and well-connected. Since we have found ourselves in each other's company within this fertile land, allow me to take this opportunity to wish you a happy Lantern Rite. It appears you have been to Fontaine, then. Given your proclivity to spread good deeds wherever you go, it's no surprise that you would make the acquaintance of a celebrity as illustrious and celebrated as Miss Farina. Uh, <laughs> that's quite high praise. What I mean to say is, you flatter me, Mr. Zhongli. Although I've built up a certain following within Fontaine, it is no reflection of strength or wisdom. I stand before you right now as nothing more than an ordinary traveler in search of beautiful scenery and creative inspiration. There is definitely more to Mr. Zhongli than meets the eye. I could tell as much from our conversation earlier. Given his breadth of knowledge on both academic and worldly matters, there's no way he hasn't heard about what happened in Fontaine. Is he just feigning ignorance for my benefit? No, 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 no. Aya, you're no common tourist. I simply won't have you talk about yourself that way. Huh? Does that mean Hu Tao also knows? You may not have heard, friends, but... Uh, um, Miss Hu Tao... Miss Farina is now one of my esteemed clients. Uh, uh, uh. Yep. <laughs> okay, okay, you win. Hmm, guess Paimon will have to break into the hidden stash at the bottom of her shoe. Uh huh? What's this about winning something? Don't tell me. You two were placing bets on us. Uh, -uh. Oh, we just saw you guys standing on the side of the road and couldn't help but take guesses as to what you were talking about. 
Oh, I see. That means you, my friend, must have guessed that I was trying to promote my business to Miss Farina. That I do, my friend. What was Paimon's guess then? Paimon thought Zhang Li was showing the newbie around. Ah, <sighs> by newbie, you mean me, right? If that's the case, then Paimon's guess was also correct. Oh, that's right. Mr. Zhang Li was telling me about some great sightseeing spots in the area. Ha! You see? Paimon was right too! Since both of our guesses were right, there can't be a winner or a loser. Hey, don't be upset, Traveler. How about this? You buy Paimon a bull and Paimon will also buy you a bull. Uh, as for the third bull... Since I was the subject of the bet, perhaps it should go to me? You know, as a congratulations for the huge deal I just struck. <laughs> I was just joking. Anyway, I should be the one treating you. The funeral parlor is about to bring in quite the sum after all. Oh, Paimon almost forgot to ask about the most important question. Did I... something happen recently, Farina? Huh? What do you mean? I... Uh... Well, you know, with you enlisting the services of Wangsheng Funeral Parlor and all... Oh, well, yes. Really? Oh, no. Paimon is so sorry for your loss. Although Paimon may have not known the person, please accept Paimon's deepest... Whoa, 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 it's not like that, Paimon. Huh? But Paimon just thought... Since you hired the services of a funeral parlor and all... Hey, it's not that big of a stretch. Really, Paimon? It's not like you don't know me. Do I look like I know anyone who would ask me to coordinate their funeral? Miss Hu Tao is simply helping prepare some props for my film. Not too long ago, I read a collection of horror stories from Liyue. The content was spectacular! In fact, I still feel the need to sleep with the light on even now. Uh, <laughs> anyway, that's not the point. Now that Fontaine's biggest star has returned to the stage, I figured it's about time the industry enjoyed a breath of fresh air. Hey, <laughs> that's pretty good. I'll have to remember that for my ad posters. Oh, Paimon sees. That makes a lot of sense. So, did you come to Liyue just to enlist the services of Wangsheng Funeral Parlor? Well, not exactly. My original plan was to just relax and enjoy the sights. But then I ran into Miss Hu Tao and Mr. Zhang Li, and, well, you know the rest. I suppose it was meant to be. It was a fated meeting indeed. Zhang Li sure loves his lofty turns of phrase. But if you ask me, it's all thanks to that man who stopped to ask for directions. Oh? Who was it? It's someone you know. Wanna take a guess? What? How did you guess that on your first try? Very impressive, my friend. Your guessing game is spot on today. thought Nervalette would be the type to get lost. I'm sure he didn't get lost. <laughs> Even I was able to find my way to this place without any trouble. He was already getting ready to leave by the time I arrived. He just wanted to ask someone about the quickest way to get back to Fontaine. Yep, that's exactly what he asked. This area is full of mountains and rivers. It's normal to not know the fastest route. So... Were you the one that pointed him in the right direction, Hutel? Of course. I'm also a guide of sorts, you know. So naturally, I also have a great sense of direction. But speaking of your friend... What about him? He doesn't get out much, does he? Ah, no wonder. He was stiff as a board and way too polite. I would have never guessed he was here on vacation if you hadn't told me. All in all, he was only here for half a day. 
I'm pretty sure he is the only one who would consider that to be a vacation. Oh? This gentleman you speak of must keep a demanding schedule. I'm sure he does. You didn't see him, but he was dressed like he was about to attend some important meeting. It wasn't anything like what someone would wear on vacation. Is that so? Wait, you didn't see him, Yoli? Unfortunately, no. At the time, it appeared as if Director Hu and Miss Farina were having quite the productive conversation. I know matters of business can take much discussion, so I decided to fetch some tea for them. What a shame. That gentleman seemed like a sophisticated sort of guy. I actually think you two would have hit it off. Is that so? <laughs> to borrow Miss Farina's turn of phrase, perhaps it just wasn't meant to be. Well, with the Traveler around, I'm sure you'll have a chance to get to know each other at some point. That's right! He's got more friends than he knows what to do with! Well, that's certainly true. Oh, that reminds me. If you get the chance, you should try and talk to Nervalette into loosening up a bit. Just tell him the Palais Mermonia isn't going to fall apart if he disappears for a few days. <laughs> he shouldn't keep himself cooped up all the time. Even clams open their shells to let in fresh water every once in a while, right? If he's really that much of a stickler for protocol, he can fill out a leave of absence request. He'd uh, have to approve it himself since he handles that sort of thing now, but you know what I mean. Seems like this gentleman is also in charge of something pretty important. <laughs> I've never heard of a demon that boring before. <laughs> in my experience, a leader needs to be able to roll with the punches. That also includes knowing when and what to prioritize. It seems like your friend still has a lot of growing to do. If I remember correctly... He's already several thousands of years old. Uh, you're quite right, Miss Hutal. Oh? Traveler, Miss Farina. Those two individuals over there appear to recognize you. Oh, it's Navia and Clorand. Hey, over here! We saw you all chatting over here. And we're wondering if we could join in. <clears throat> um, please, excuse the interruption. Oh, <laughs> so polite. No apologies necessary. Any friend of the Traveler and Miss Farina is a friend of mine. Ah, <laughs> straight to the point. I like it. It's getting late. If we want to catch a boat back before dark, we should probably get going. Indeed. Then, Miss Farina? Oh, uh, uh, yes? When are you planning to head back? Do you need us to escort you? Oh, um, I, I don't think that will be necessary. I mean, you're not my subordinate anymore. You don't need to look after me. Um, I didn't mean it that way. It's normal for friends to travel home together if they run into each other on the road. There are a lot of mountainous roads in this area. I imagine they'll be even harder to navigate after dark. Exactly! Just like in those ghost stories. Eight paths converge in a wood. Beside them an old house is stood. If you dare to go inside, not a soul will greet your eye. But, if you take a closer look, there may be something you mistook. A candle flickers to and fro, yet there is no wind to make it so. What is its secret? What could it mean? In this wood, 
where mystery screams. Ooh. <laughs> My dear demoiselle, uh, uh, ladies, no, uh, I mean friends, please take me with you. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Gotta say, Farina, you are really quite the character. By the way, did I hear you mention that Clorand used to work under you? Then you must have also been a leader at some point. Uh, well, that's, uh, all in the past now. Besides, being a leader is hard. It wasn't the right job for me. I prefer how things are now. I can come and go as I please, and get to enjoy the sweet taste of freedom. I see. Well, you've certainly picked an apt place to relax. Chaoying Village is an exemplary choice. Only the best. <laughs> and I've learned a lot, too. Thank you so much, Miss Hu Tao and Mr. Zhongli. It's fine. You thanked us more than enough already. The next time you're in this neck of the woods, I'll treat you to some dim sum in the city. Dim sum? Is that some kind of liyue term for snacks or desserts? They are a part of it. It's basically a table full of as much tea, sweets, and good company as you can manage. Oh, so it's basically a tea party. <laughs> Sounds great. Make sure to order the winter melon cake and the lotus flower crisp. They're so sweet and delicious, Paimon knows you'll love them. Ooh, okay. <laughs> I'll be looking forward to it then. Wait, but didn't you guys say you were here on vacation? How come you're all going home empty-handed? Of course I am. I bought tons of fun things to bring home with me. A kite, a parasol, a little tin frog that jumps. Oh, and a stuffed toy of a mythical beast. Clorand is the one who didn't buy anything for herself. So all you're bringing back with you is that tea? And some tea-flavored hard candies. They're for Sijuin. Clorand isn't much of a shopaholic. Well, one of us has to practice restraint. Hey, I'm hardly reckless with my Mora. I'll have you know, all the purchases I made today were well within my budget. Me? Oh, well, I bought some tea, of course. I just had to try all the varieties recommended in the Steambird. Other than that, just some bits and bobs, you know. <laughs> a little bit of this, a little bit of that. They should all be things I can use. I think. Uh, now Paimon's even more confused. If you bought that much stuff, where did it all go? Into one of Linny's magic packets? Oh, <laughs> actually... Monsieur Neuvillette took them with him. Oh, so that's what happened. Wait, what? Why did he take them? Oh, he's not hoarding treasure, is he? Oh, <laughs> that's quite the imagination you've got there, Paimon. Monsieur Nervillette just saw the amount of bags we had and offered to take them back for us. I felt a bit bad at first, but uh, I really did have a lot of stuff. <laughs> He even offered to deliver my gifts to the Fortress of Meripede for me, once he's done with the day's work. Novelette is a man of his word. If he says he can do something, then he means it. See, even Clorand was happy to take him up on his offer. If even his trusty subordinate agreed, then who was I to refuse? Wow, he seems like a real gentleman. Maybe he's not as uptight as I thought. If only the funeral parlor had an employee as thoughtful, proactive, and responsible as him. Right, Zhongli? Indeed. Clan said Nervalet offered to deliver her gifts to Risley. So if we go to the entrance of the Fortress of Meripede, maybe we'll run into Nervalet. But we don't know exactly when he'll show up. That reminds me, a new year of work is about to begin. If there's anything you want to talk about, Zhongli, you know you can come to me. 
I'm all ears. Does the director have any concerns? It just seemed like you were a bit preoccupied today, and much less talkative than usual. He barely said anything other than, Is that so? And, Indeed. If you ask me, I'd say you're having a midlife crisis. You're getting to be around that age, after all. Is that so? Ugh. <laughs> I jest. Given its distance from the city, Chaoying Village enjoys a much slower pace of life. Surrounded by such peace and tranquility, I also seem to have developed a proclivity for inactivity. I apologize for making you worry. Ah, um, I see. What do you think, Traveler? Is this atmosphere putting you in a lazy mood, too? Wow, you are getting really good at these kinds of lines. Indeed. Well, everyone, make sure that you've got all your belongings with you before we leave. If there's any souvenirs anyone still wants to buy, the time is now. Reliable as ever, Miss President. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? Chlorand is right, though. You really are reliable. It's not what she's saying. It's the way she's saying it. I will say, but I never thought you'd be so easygoing outside of work, Clorand. The tone of voice you use when you're working doesn't exactly make you seem like the type who enjoys interacting with people. Well, I try to keep my professional and private life separate. That includes my behavior. You take care now, Traveler. Paimon. Ah, trying to act cool now, are we? <laughs> well, I guess it's not an act for you. Is it? You are indeed quite strong. <laughs> it's been great talking to you all. I'm really glad I decided to come to Chaoying Village. Maybe we could go on another trip together sometime? Emerge! It's you. It has been some time since our last meeting. Few people frequent this location. Since I was able to conclude my work early for the day, I thought I might take a walk and avail myself of this area's peace and quiet. You call this early? Do you always work this late, Nevelet? Strictly speaking, that depends on the agenda for the day. I am hardly bereft of time, however, so working late is of little consequence to me. Really? If you have so much time on your hands, then why did you only go to Chaoying Village for half a day? Hmm? First, I should clarify that I was referring to my lifespan, rather than the time at my disposal on any given day. Second, I was unaware you possessed knowledge of my trip to Chaoying Village. I see. Thank you for informing me. Yes. They have been safely delivered. <laughs> I have to hand it to Cloran. Just a simple gift delivery, and she has the great and mighty Udex at her beck and call. I was just passing through. It was merely an act of convenience. All right. Then I hereby confirm receipt of the goods on behalf of the staff of the Fortress of Meripede. A verbal receipt of confirmation? Is such a formality really necessary for a small matter such as this? Guess not. This quantity of tea, though, seems a little excessive for a gift, don't you think? Before you know it, they'll start accusing me of taking bribes. Ah, about that. Much of that is my own excess, I'm afraid. Oh? <laughs> Why? What happened? It was buy ten boxes, get half off. Ah, that explains it then. Well, go ahead and leave them to me. I'll get through this stash as fast as I can. 
You have my thanks. Oh, there's something else I'd like to give to you. This is... a stone slate, engraved with a symbolic design. Well, that is an apt description. It is, in actuality, a legal codex. A legal codex, huh? Hmm. Before the advent of modern writing utensils, information was recorded on stone slabs such as this. The law was no different. Oh... okay. Since ancient times, the scales of justice have symbolized the fairness and impartiality of judiciousness. As a tribute to that sentiment, this slate was designed after a traditional legal codex, and engraved with a symbol instead of text. During my travels recently, I chanced upon a roadside stall offering tourists the opportunity to try their hand at the ceramic arts. So I decided to have a go. We joked with Cloran some time ago about gifting you a legal codex. So, here you go. Ah, so that's what this is about. I did not expect you to remember it as well. In any case, I hope this can be considered as a reasonable attempt to join in on the banter. It is a very good attempt. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Even your sense of humor centers around the law. That's an impressive level of commitment. Well, a gift of this significance deserves to be put on display, and I know just the place. Front and center in the fortress's showroom. Ah, oh, surely there's no need for such a grand gesture. Just kidding. I don't have anything like a showroom. But we do have a storage room. We can put it next to all the mechanical parts Sijuin has collected. That sounds good to me. So that's what you were doing in Chaoying Village! Indeed. Of course, while I was there, I also took the opportunity to taste the local spring water. The aftertaste is much purer than what I have delivered to me in Fontaine. It stands to reason that the long-distance transport has a tendency to imbue the water with extraneous emotion. If you want to experience the true flavor, you simply have to go to the source. Perhaps I should organize some time off to do the same elsewhere. Then we are of the same mind. It appears my desire is justified. If you say so, like, you know you don't have to justify a vacation, right? You can just... Take one! After all, you're heartily bereft of time. You can do whatever you want! You're quite right. I suppose I suffer not from a lack of opportunity, but rather a lack of inspiration. However, after reading a few articles about Li Wei's holiday traditions, the idea popped into my head and made itself quite at home. Seeing as I was free of responsibilities for the morning, I decided to depart at once. Refreshing. My spontaneous outing seemed to inspire quite a few other spontaneous decisions as well. Take, for example, my foray into ceramics. At first, soil from the ground is granular and unforgiving, but add the right amount of water, and it becomes soft, moldable, and able to take shape. In the past, I never thought about how quotidian vessels were crafted, but now I have participated in their very making. This is also something I made today. was indeed one of my inspirations. Really? You like it? To tell you the truth, given your unexpected arrival, I find myself quite unequipped to give you the welcome you deserve. Around such an important holiday such as this, human custom would dictate that gifts should be in order. But I'm afraid this is all I can offer. If you'll have it, that is. That is precisely why it would do me such a great honor if you accepted. You are most welcome. Happy Lantern Rite. Hmm. Approve a leave of absence request for myself. That sounds like it could easily lead to a vicious cycle of self-indulgence, something which couldn't be in further violation of protocol. But... I suppose I understand her point. 
My proclivity to refrain from personal outings does, in part, originate from a sense of responsibility toward my duties. But it is also due to a lack of desire to engage in the human world. But now I see that the human world is indeed full of many interesting places to discover. Lantern Rite marks the start of the new year in Liyue. In the spirit of the season, then, I wish you a year of success as vast and endless as the open ocean.